Hey guys, today we're looking at a, a KitchenAid fridge. Hopefully you can see the model number up there on the tag. And the symptom is, it just clicks, doesn't cool, compressor doesn't start. So overall it's in pretty good shape, I think it's maybe 10-15 years old off the top of my head. And this is kind of what we found when we got in here. So it was a lot dustier, I already dusted it off, but it's already got an aftermarket starter on there. Right here. Wait for it to click for a minute so you guys hear the problem. Hopefully you'll hear it. I don't know if you heard that. Yep, you hear that clicking? So nobody's home on the compressor. So the condenser fan runs, the evaporator fan is running, but our compressor is not starting. So let's figure out what's going on. So I got you guys focused on the side of the compressor. This is kind of how I found it. It's got one of those aftermarket starters on there. And uh, you can see that there's, probably see there's three terminals coming out the compressor. Let's see if we can point them out to you. You got one in the back, one in the front, and one on the bottom. So the first step is to figure out which one is which, um, especially if you are installing an aftermarket one. So you want to check the resistance between all of the terminals and maybe even label them. And what you'll find is the resistance between start and run. So there's three terminals, start, run, and common. You'll find that the resistance between two of them will be higher and, uh, than, than the rest. So those two terminals will be your start and run terminals. And then from there, you want to figure out, well, I guess when you, once you figure out start, start and run, that tells you which one is common. The one, is not, the one that is not, I guess the third pin there is going to be your common and the one that has the highest resistance to common will be your start and the run will have the lowest resistance to common so let's check these out i'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see this because it's not good visibility here and this suction line's kind of in the way too let's give it a shot maybe they're even labeled on here We've got the old starter off so let's check resistance between these. I know you guys probably can't see this too well. I apologize, but I'm just sticking my meter in all these terminals. So we got 3.45 ohms from the bottom pin to the right pin. 2.6 ohms from the bottom pin to the left pin. And about 6.0 five ohms or so from top left and top right. So that tells me that top left and top right, one of them start, one of them's run. So we just got to figure out which one is which. That also tells me the bottom one is the common. So since we know that top left and top right are start and run, one, one of them start, one of them's run, we know the bottom one is common. Let's check the resistance from the bottom one common here again. Three and a half ohms, and two and a half ohms. So that tells me that the one in the back on the left, that's going to be your run, and the one closest to me right here is going to be the start. And if you look really carefully at the old starter, you guys probably won't be able to see this. The terminals are actually labeled. So it says common is black, run is red, and start is white. So if you don't have one that's labeled, then I just showed you how to determine what's what, though. All right, so on this one, we're gonna be using a different starter. This one is a three-in-one. Uh, it's a solid state relay overload start capacitor combination. Um, it's a universal one. I didn't even know they made universal ones until uh, I encountered this, this old one, because normally you find them just kind of stabbed onto the terminals and, and that's kind of it. But this is cool. You can stick one of these in your toolbox for about 10, 12 bucks, and then you don't have to worry about ordering parts and having the fridge down. So. I'll give you guys the part number for this thing, um, in the, or I'll give you a link to, the, to buy the part in the video. It's made by Supco. It's a part number RC0, RCO410. It's for quarter to third horse uh, 120 volts applications. And I think uh, this will run on any, this will uh, work on any capillary system, which most fridges are. And here, I don't know if you guys can see this, they give you a little diagram of what wire is what. So just like the old product, the black is the common, the white is the start, and the red is the run. Okay, so I got all the terminals hooked up. Um, again, I got common, go, the black going to common, the white going to start, the red going to run. And I just clipped the start kit onto one of the, the I guess there's a kind of a 
little gap in the metal housing where the bracket that covers the terminals goes on to, I just clip this onto there. Now our only remaining job is to hook up the power terminals and that's pretty straightforward. It doesn't really matter what direction they go in. Just take our wire connections here and wire nut them together. Look at that. Oh, there's the electrical tape. I'm going to put this wire nut on here too, and then we'll electrical tape them together just to, just want to deal with vibration issues. And this is a UL listed electrical tape that is not branded. Awesome. Oh, made in China. That's good. Not that there's anything wrong with anything made in China because pretty much everything is today, but from Wuhan. yeah, could be from Wuhan. I hope not. I tend to prefer the, uh, the 3M stuff usually lasts a little bit longer except on TV screens. Can't change your neighbor? Can't change your neighbors, that's right. Let's give her a test and see what happens before we tape everything up. Okay. We're plugging it in right now. Let's see what happens. Hopefully hear the compressor come on. Oh, I hear a compressor. And a phone. Compressor's running, guys. Let's see if it cools. Okay, I let the fridge run for a little bit just to make sure it was cooling and it was so I think this repair is all done so rather than replace your thousand dollar refrigerator uh, you can get one of these start kits I'll give you a link to buy one on Amazon for about you know 12 10 12 bucks and the nice thing is they're universal you don't have to worry about buying something that's fridge specific or stocking stuff that's fridge spe spe specific can't say the word so I'm gonna keep one of these in my toolbox for next time this happens so uh, definitely a good repair thanks guys if you thought this video was helpful please subscribe